On show 455, gas drivers fined for parking in EV spots, superchargers upgraded, VWIDR is spied. Those stories and many more coming up on the podcast today. My name is Martin Lee. Welcome to EV News Daily. Well, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. In fact, wherever you're listening around the world, welcome to the show. I go through every EV story that I can find every single day, filter out the stuff that you need to know about. So you're up to speed, you know what's going on, but you're not wasting hours and stuff just flicking around online and blogs and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully, hopefully we save you some time. Thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. I've got some new names to mention uh, very soon. I'll do it over the weekend, actually. Uh, in the meantime, myev.com has been supporting this show for almost a year now. Not only a platform to buy and sell EVs in the USA, but also an amazing resource to learn about EVs. So I, I always figure that I can see the way this show is growing, by the way, every single day. More people listening. Uh, there must be somebody listening for the first time today. If that's you, hello. We've all bunched up a bit. There's plenty of room for some more. And so if you are new to EVs, then myEV.com is a great resource to learn about electric cars. One of the big companies is called BYD. They're Chinese, by the way. They make buses, commercial vehicles, cars as well. Now, they're one of the biggest EV companies in the world. But because they're Chinese, you may never have heard of them. They are a leading Chinese EV maker. BYD is going to spend 10 billion won. That's $1.5 billion to build its fourth plant for passenger cars, according to Nikkei.com today. Well, the automaker signed an agreement today with the government on the eastern city of Changzhou to produce EVs and key components there. The new site's going to have annual capacity of 400,000 cars. The new site is uh, detailed on when the factory is going to break ground uh, will be disclosed very soon. BYD controls a fifth of China's EV market, the largest EV market in the entire world. The automaker, which doesn't disclose its production capacity for EVs only, sold about 250,000 of them last year, we think. I'll put a link in the show notes to the Nikkei article. Well, Icing. Icing, I-C-E. Okay, so if you are new to the show, well, then let's let's step all the way back. I-C-E stands for Internal Combustion Engine. Uh, we call them fossil cars or ice cars or gas cars, but anyway, uh, so they're ice cars. Icing, icing is when a fossil fuel burning car sp- Parks in a spot reserved for EVs, and I must say that no spots are reserved for EVs. There is, there shouldn't be anywhere in the world a spot reserved for EVs. There should be spots reserved for charging an EV, but you shouldn't just reserve spots for electric cars. And some people I've seen, I saw one recently. There's a B that BMW i3 pulled up to a charging spot, plugged in their car to charge. Didn't start the charge, but had plugged it in So because it was on-street charging. And so if the traffic warden had come round on their rounds and seen they were just parked there, they would have got a ticket. So they, they pulled up to the space, plugged it in, didn't start a charge, and wandered off because it's in a very convenient place to uh, shop where I live. And I'm thinking, hmm, if I was a more confrontational person, I would have said something. But, you know, keeping the peace and all that kind of stuff. But come on. These spots are reserved for charging, not parking. Anyway, so icing is when somebody parks in a charging space in a gas-powered car. Uh, it can be intentional, or I think in like 99% of the cases, it's entirely unintentional. And there's 1% of people who are a-holes who just know it's an EV space and are doing it on purpose. Anyway, either way, it can make an EV owner's life particularly hell when you really have to charge. A new bill in Colorado wants to permanently put an end to this practice. Uh, The perpetrators, the perps, would be ordered to pay a fine, says Autoblog today. The matter at hand, they say, is keeping charging stations in public parking lots open for EVs or plug-in hybrid vehicles that need to use them. Now, this includes gas-powered vehicles or battery-powered vehicles that are not actively in a charging session. The results, if this bill goes through in Colorado, a $150 fine with a $32 surcharge, no mention of towing in the bill, but I imagine that's probably in there somewhere. 
Let's move on to Tesla's Gigafactory 3. It's the one they're building in China, and it's going to smash all sorts of records by the look of it. If you're not familiar with Weibo, I think that's how I would pronounce it, W-E-I-B-O. It is one of the most popular social media networks in China. It's also a place where Tesla has posted important information. And the website put out an article today claiming that the Gigafactory 3 is on course to demolish any prior construction record in China, says Stephen Loveday for InsideEVs.com today. Well, Tesla China has already changed what was a vegetable field into pretty much a factory in 108 days. That's less than four months. In the past, it took other companies to build that kind of factory uh, in that kind of style about 17 months to do a comparable thing to the Tesla Shanghai Gigafactory. Uh, Tesla held its official groundbreaking ceremony earlier this year, January 7. Construction, though, had cheekily begun already in December of last year. If the company can work to get the project functional anytime soon, and they say sometime soon, pre-summer, so June, May, June, they could well start to assemble certain parts of the cars in that factory, which just, it doesn't even make sense to my tiny brain. But when you see the drone shots on YouTube of this factory that has just shot up in 108 days, you know, the roof is on. The roof is on the roof is going on and then once that is they can do the fit out and you know like i say by the end of the year at least they will have a a significant amount of construction going on at least by the end of 2019 and then when a car is officially designated classified as made in china assembled in china so they'll bring the bits in but they'll put them together in the factory it can then avoid those import taxes Staying with Tesla and staying with Inside EVs, actually. InsideEVs.com got a good new look this week. They On Monday, earlier this week, they changed, they updated their website. A whole new design. If you haven't seen it lately, uh, go check it out. It's a fresh new look, new layout, easier to find stuff. And, it, you know, all websites need a little, uh, little zhuzh sometimes. A little zhuzh. And they've done that this week. It looks great, by the way. Well, Inside EV says that a Tesla spokesperson has confirmed an upgrade of the existing supercharging network will mean that charging can now go up to 150 kilowatts, five kilowatts more than previously announced. Originally, the superchargers were rated, they are rated really, at 120 kilowatts. So, very soon. A software, again, this is mind-blowing. Clearly, years of data analysis of charging sessions, charging networks, charging uh, various countries around the world, various car usage, all that kind of stuff. They're Actually, you know what? We charge at 120, we can push it to 150. When, you know, when does that, oh man, when does that ever happen with, with a gas car, with a fossil car? It just doesn't. It does it, no one... You don't wake up in the morning and all of a sudden your car gets better. Anyway, uh, as, as Inside EVs understand, uh, Tesla is unlocking the full potential of the installed supercharging base. After years of utilization, it's proven it's possible, it's safe, they're going to upgrade it. As for this new feature, it's called En Route Warm Up, and it, it's a brilliant idea kind of in its simplicity so if you use your navigation in a tesla rather than setting your nav to your eventual eventual <laughs> destination which might be in i don't know four hours time if you're stopping after two hours at a supercharger well set your destination for the supercharger and therefore the car will condition itself so that as you roll in to charge the car the battery temperature you know that that internal resistance that that changes with battery temperature and lithium-ion batteries. It's ready, and it's ready to go, and it's ready to take the maximum possible charge. As you arrive, it's optimal, it's ready, it's conditioned, and it reduces the average time to charge by 25%, makes a big difference for existing owners. Finally, let's talk batteries. So, again, if you're new to the podcast, little recap, little mini recap, the batteries inside Teslas are basically like big AA batteries. They're actually called 18650s because they are 18 millimeters by 65 millimeters. Don't ask me why they're not called 1865s. They are 18650s. 
Well, that's in the tester model S and the X. You'll find these batteries, by the way, in just about every laptop computer battery. Uh, not all, but just about, you know, many, many laptop computer batteries use these basically big cylindrical batteries. They're very common, relatively cheap. That's right, Tesla went with them. They were proven technology. Well, over the years, Tesla decided that they could get more efficiency. I'll, I'll use that word. There's many reasons why. Anyway, a slightly larger form factor. So if an 18650 is a, like a, a, a swollen up AA battery, well, the 2170s are even bigger. And as you can imagine, 21 mil by 70 mil. So those are the batteries in Model 3s. Right, there's your history lesson if you're new to the podcast. Panasonic make all these batteries and they are close to upgrading their battery plants over in Japan to produce batteries for, well, cells for Tesla batteries, which are on the new form factor. Panasonic currently is the exclusive battery provider of Tesla, although recently Elon has made noises about having to look elsewhere because they want to make so many cars. Uh, the Japanese plants handle the 18650s at the moment. It used to power the Model S and the Model X, whereas the Nevada plant, which is in Sparks, Nevada, that's where they make the newer 2170s. So at the minute, they're making the old batch, old, but the existing batteries for S and X in Japan and shipping them in. Uh, the Japanese production lines look like they're going to be upgraded now and they're going to need some changes, but minor changes, and they can then switch to making the new 2170 cells, uh, said this person that would uh, decline to be identified, but did say to Inside EVs, actually... They're very close. Panasonic are close to upgrading their existing lines so that they only make Japan, whether it's Japan, whether it's Nevada, the eight, the, the 2170s, the ones that you find in the Model 3 that then will be put into the S and the X and the, the Y and the Roadster and the Tesla Semi. Okay, right. A link in the show notes to that Reuters article if you want to read a little bit more. Tesla's next generation Roadster is a car that will be a halo car. Not just for EVs, but for all cars. Elon wants it to be the quickest car, bar none. The fastest car, bar none. Not just with batteries, of all cars. He wants it to be a halo car. And he unveiled the next-gen Tesla Roadster back in... Oh, God, when was that? November 2017? Now, he shocked pretty much everybody at the time by saying it was going to have a range of 620 miles a charge. That's about 1,000 kilometres between charges. These figures are insane, says Simon at Teslarati. Now there are indications that the next generation Tesla Roadster will go even farther. They've made more upgrades to it. Elon mentioned on Twitter... Of course he did. Uh, on Twitter, uh, that the range of the upcoming vehicle wheel will be above 1,000 kilometres. He was responding to a question by the podcast host of uh, Ride the Lightning podcast, Ryan McCaffrey, who was inquiring if the e efficiencies recently introduced in the S and the X would make it all the way through to the Roadster. And that was the reply. I'll put a link to Tesla RT in the show notes. And finally, I've mentioned the, the Tesla Semi. Uh, so let's talk about it very quickly. That was also unveiled in 2017. Of course, that was the unveiling. The, the Roadster came out the back of one of those semi trucks at the end. Uh, in 2017, we were led to believe, well, we, we, we thought it was going to be made sooner than it really is. It's currently, they've got prototypes made. They're currently doing test runs all over the place. Uh, they've been delivering Model 3s to customers. They've been seen today towing blocks of concrete, which I gather is a well-tried and tested way of simulating the weight of a full trailer. And so the Tesla Semi is going to enter production just not as soon as we thought it was going to. The automotive president of Tesla, Jerome Guillen, uh, said according to InsideEVs.com, production was going to start at the end of this year. It will now start next year in 2020. Inside EVs link down there in the show notes. Right, let's talk about Volkswagen's ID. This, the IDR, I should say. The IDR is the car that would conquer Pike's Peak not so long ago. It's a little, it's a diddly little car. I've seen it up close, not driven it. As if VW are going to let anybody drive it apart from the professional driver they've hired to uh, to drive this car. But I've been I've been within touching distance of the IDR, and it's tiny, like like nearly all race cars. When it, I think whenever you see 
a race car on on TV, they look they look bigger than they are. Then when you, whenever you see whether it's Formula One, Formula E, whenever you see a race car up close, I personally maybe it's just me personally I always think they look smaller than they do, and the IDR definitely I was smaller than I was thinking it was going to be. VW have conquered certain places already with it, and now they're planning an all out assault on the Nurburgring, the Nordschleife. A new lap record is on the cards for an electric vehicle. It, it's going to beat the Neo EP9, which set a time of uh, 6 minutes, 45.9 seconds. Spy shots and a brief video online catches some of the testing for the attempt, according to Christopher Smith at Moto1.com. Volkswagen did extensive computer sims ahead of putting the car on the track. Real World Runs are now figuring out the suspension setup, uh, geometry and stuff like that, and finding the idea deal tyre compound. I'll put a link to Motor One in the show notes. Right, final story then. We're cracking through the stories today. Uh, Fuel. F-U-E-L-L. Fuel is a new electric bike. They make the flow and the fluid. And today, well, they officially launched those two bikes. The fluid is their electric bicycle, Uh, although it's quite a bicycle. It's available as the Fluid 1 or the Fluid 1S. Now, the 1S will do 28 miles an hour uh, via the website Indiegogo. They're launching this today. The bikes start, like I say, they're a heck of a bike, at $2,300 with a 30% discount if you join as part of the Indiegogo Indiegogo campaign. Uh, It says electricbikeaction.com. Those looking for a motorcycle might like the Flow. Well, the Flow is an electric motorbike, and it's available to pre-order. Two versions are available. There's an 11-kilowatt version and a 35-kilowatt version. Uh, The the starting price is about $10,000, $11,000. Goes up to about twelve thousand dollars i'll put a link in the show notes to that article if you fancy some two-wheeled electric action if you send me your answers to question of the week or your answer i will read them out on sunday and here is this week's question as set by myev.com what's the dumbest thing you've ever heard about evs what do you reckon? What's the dumbest thing you've ever heard about EVs? You can let me know. You can email hello at evnewsdaily.com. Leave a comment in Facebook and YouTube and myev.com as well. On to the end bit then. There are 218 patrons of the show. What's Patreon all about? It's a website that you can go to uh, to support your favourite creators, whether that is uh, songwriters, performers, poets, writers, or even people like me who make podcasts every single day it's p-a-t-r-e-o-n.com slash ev news daily and uh, they're, they're not exactly micro payments uh, you know it's like five dollars or ten dollars or more maybe if you're a company or you just want to support more because you believe the cause and what we're doing and promoting electric vehicles clean air the future uh, then you can always you know, always always go more uh, this show will always be free by the way but we put it online as a way of funding the ever-increasing costs that uh, this show incurs as it grows. If you want to download any of the 454 previous shows, you can do. They're online for free, but hey, it's all about the future. It's about looking forward. If you want the shows first and free and automatically, check out Apple Podcasts, iTunes, Google Podcasts. Uh, they're on Spotify as well, and uh, yeah, loads of other places as well. Check out evnewsdaily.com. That's the blog. There's links to all of them on the websites if you get to leave a little review on itunes that's amazing if you don't no worries in the meantime uh, catch up on the socials by just searching ev news daily have a wonderful day i'll catch you for the weekend edition tomorrow and remember there is no such thing as a self-charging hybrid <laughs>